Okay, so how do we make this laser randomly placed? If you click any object, and I will click the helper, you may notice this little section called randomize. Now you are able to randomize the position, the scale, and the rotation of any object. For this one, I'm going to randomize the position. Now listen to this. When you randomize an object with a helper, it's important that you randomize the helper only, and I'll tell you why in a bit. So there are a few different options for randomization here as well. The first one means no randomization. The second means that you can enter two different positions and it will pick a random position in between them. The third will only pick one of the two numbers you entered. And the fourth is kind of complicated and I won't be explaining it. I'm going to be picking the second option. Also on a side note, random interval is also in here and I have a whole separate video explaining that. I want the Y coordinate to always be at zero, so I will leave zero in both the Y position boxes. But I want the X position to be in between negative 34 and positive 34. This means it will appear anywhere between the left and right sides of the screen. So let's see what happens. So the helper has chosen a random position in between the two coordinates I typed in. But what about the actual laser? That's where parenting comes in. Parenting, like I said earlier, is a way to attach objects to other objects. So in this case, the helper is going to be the parent and the laser is going to be the child, meaning that the laser object is going to follow the helper object wherever it goes or appears. To set that up, I'm going to click the laser, go to parenting, and click the laser helper, which is the name of my helper. And now, this object should follow the helper wherever it goes or appears. So, let's try it out. So now I want to copy and paste this laser a bunch of times in the song. The way that a lot of people do this is by playing the song in slow motion and then adding markers to the beat of the music. But I don't especially have to do that for this song because the timeline has audio visualization down here and the particular song I picked, it's very easy to see the different drum beats on the timeline. So first I'm going to move the laser over here so that the laser object appears on the first note. Now I can paste this on the other markers. To do this, I don't have to just copy and paste these two objects over and over again. Instead, I'm going to make these two objects into a prefab. In the editor, a prefab is basically just a compressed group of objects. To make a prefab, first select all the objects you want in the prefab. You can drag your mouse to make a selection, or you can hold shift and select a bunch of objects individually. Then press the prefab button. Here you have a list of all the prefabs you have ever saved for any level ever. You can take any of these prefabs and move them here to the level prefabs. These are the ones that you specifically use for the level that you are currently working on. To create a new prefab, make sure you have your object selected and press this button that says new external prefab. Here, you get to name your prefab and color code it. It's pretty self-explanatory. And once you're done, click Create Prefab. And now that I've made the prefab, if I click this button again and scroll all the way to the bottom of the external prefab list, LibLaser should appear at the very bottom. And if I click it, I can add it to my list of level prefabs. And after I restart the game, this prefab will be alphabetized. Now, clicking the prefab in the level prefabs will add this particular prefab where the slider is. Now, the best way to add prefabs quickly is to go to prefabs, click select quick prefab, and then click the prefab you want. I am saying prefab a whole lot in this video. Now, whenever you press the slash or question mark button, it will add that prefab to the timeline. The only problem is, when I place down this prefab, it starts from the very beginning, on the spot where I want it to be. 
that's not what I want. I want the lasers to be synced up with the beat, not the helpers. To fix this, I need to use this thing up here, the prefab lead time. You can change the lead time by clicking any prefab and just clicking these arrows up here. As you can see, this causes the prefab to move left and right on the timeline. First, I'm going to set it to zero. Then I'm going to align it with the marker over here. Then I'm going to use the prefab lead time to align it just so with the original object. Now, whenever I spawn this prefab, it should appear so that the marker is on the point where the laser strikes. And if you're confused by everything I just said, then just watch this. I'm going to play the song and then press the slash key to the beat of the music. And now I will delete this prefab and let's see what the final result is. And that is how you make randomized objects. Thanks for watching this series. I will definitely be making more informational videos on Project Arrhythmia since there's lots I haven't covered yet, but I also want to try my hand at more satirical videos. I do have a few planned. I don't know, I'll see what I'll do next, then I'll do it when I feel like it. I can't really say for sure. But you should join the Discord server because there's a ton of other people there. They're all really cool, and if you have more questions about the editor, they can definitely help Welcome you out. Welcome to the Project